I jumped out of my skin probably four or five times watching the speeds, feeds, clearances that Camasys spit out to make this central bracket. Very aggressive step overs. We didn't break a single tool. Everything you guys are about to see was filmed live straight out of the computer. I wanna show you guys the brand new release of Camasys 2.0. Again, we're gonna be programming this in Mastercam. There are a few changes that have been made, um, quality of life improvements, user experience, and then also how the machine actually works with that Camasys control. Um, there's some really cool machine learning stuff in there. It's gonna program more like you like to program. Well, let's go to the computer, let's take a look at this. Okay guys, so when we go in and we look at Cam Assist, this is how it looks now. So this is going to open in a new window. This is a brand new feature with Cam Assist 2.0. This gives it a lot more power than it used to have before. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna go in and actually assess my part. This is a brand new feature with Cam Assist 2.0 where not only are we gonna get the tool paths generated and everything we're looking for, out of the Cam Assist product, but this is an added capability that's gonna show me how machinable my part is. This is gonna help call out any kind of issues there are with it. So here you can see this has actually detected an issue. So there is an unmachinable surface here, and if I click it, it's gonna go and highlight that. Now you can see that's on my op too. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, I believe that's just an issue with my model, but that could have been something critical. So if it was something critical to my part, this stops it right now and says, hey, you've got an issue. So here's my part. I can manipulate it as I like. I can see my stock setup. I can see my work holding. We're going to go through to prepare. So this is where I'm going to go through, select my work holding, my avoidance geometry, and everything that's going to determine how this actually works. For my mode, we can have three axes. If we have three plus two for five axes, this will do it as well. The machine, this is going to be where I decide what kind of parameters we're gonna be using in the machine. So maybe I have a little tool room mill, I can go low speed, low power. If I have a big beast on the floor, I can go high speed, high power, or I can actually go set up my machine. But this is so if you go put this in a tiny mill, it's not gonna go try to take, you know, two inch deep cuts. That's how it's actually gonna adjust how it outputs these tool paths in order to optimize for my machines. Material, we're gonna choose 6061 on here because that's what this is gonna be made out of. And tool set, we already have our tool library set up, but this is where you can have specific tool libraries set up for either you know each material, for each machine, or if you know I like to run these kind of tools, but another guy here at the shop likes to run a different set, we can kind of change it that way. Then we're gonna hit run cam assist. So this is where we get that human in the loop kind of aspect that maybe this was not featuring before or lacking before. So it's gonna go through and decide how it wants to go and program. Now before, this used to just immediately go output to my master cam, we get our operations, and I'd have to go through and kind of see what it was doing, you know, almost backtrack and see what it did. Now, this saves you time and gives you more control because it's gonna go through and actually show me what each operation is going to do, as well as the cycle time for each operation. So instead of going through and just deleting things after it did it, this gives you a lot more control over that. And just like that, it's gonna spit out my program. So you can see this is actually going from both sides. I have both sets of tool paths turned on at the moment, but we're gonna be able to pull that around and kind of break it down so you can see what it does. So let's turn off my second operation here. So we just have the one. So we're gonna go through this kind of bit by bit and show you what it's going to do. So you can see my model, you can see it's on the parallels. The stock is not showing right now, but you get the idea. So first we're gonna go in and face. You know, we like to have a nice, uh, even, nice surface to work from. This is gonna be the beginning of that. So first we're gonna go in and do our facing. Next, we're gonna get into the next gen roughing.
Now, one thing I want to point out here is if you can see where my mouse is, you can see that there's a stock model. And as we go through this, you're going to see that over and over again. One thing that Cam Assist is doing is it uses a lot of rest functions. So rest milling is where instead of starting from zero with each operation, it goes and calculates how much material is left over after each operation and only goes and mills that out. You know, opti rough, opti rest, these things have existed for a long time. What makes this interesting is that it automatically does it after each operation. So in theory, and kind of what I've seen, is that it's gonna be more efficient. You know, we're cutting out air milling, we're not having as many wasted moves, um, the clearances update, you know, if it knows there's nothing there, it's not going to go but retract to six inches if it can just jump over the part. So it works really well. You'll see when we run this. So moving on to our Opti Rough, you can see that this is going to go in with that three quarter inch end mill and it is going to hog out the entire outside of this part. This was a crazy operation. Uh, I think it was stepping over something like 60%. No problem. You know, one thing that we were a little nervous about when we ran this was that it does some very aggressive milling. We didn't break a tool, all my tools were fine, and you can see the finishes at the end were just fine as well. So after we do our outside there, we are going to pop in to the center. So this is gonna grab that half inch end mill. This is going to hog out the entire inside of this part. So you can see that it's using some helical entries. So we're getting a nice quick ramp into that part. Um, it is doing some very aggressive step overs. Again, about 55%, I believe, for this. Hogging out that material probably five times as fast as if I had programmed it. Um, one thing that me and the guys always say is we like cam assist because it shows us what's possible sometimes. Even if it's a little scary, you go, well, oh, they did a 50% step over at 200 inches a minute. I guess I could do 30% at 100 all day, and maybe I was only doing 60 before. So it's interesting to see that happen. Our next path, this is going in and just cleaning up the bottoms of these pockets. Um, again, if there was anything here I didn't like, I could turn it off. You know, maybe I don't need to clean that out, but here we are gonna go in and hog out the inside of that hole. Again, that's just roughing that out, making sure it's all nice and ready to go. After that, we are already going on to our finishing operations. Our roughing is pretty much done. So we're gonna move on to our flats. You can see, I'll just turn on the whole flats here so you can see. This is going to go on and clean all my flat surfaces on the inside. So this is going and just making sure everything is coming into spec. I believe there are finished passes after this, but this is after roughing. Now we're starting to take things into size. Again, with that half inch ML for all of that. We're gonna keep holding that half inch ML and we're gonna now start going and finishing walls. So you can see that everything in there is basically going to clean up. And then we are also going to clean up the outside. The outside it's actually going to use that three quarter inch ML again. Again, more rigidity. Um, it's going to give a better finish. You want to use a bigger tool when you can. Less deflection. It's kind of the way it goes. After that, we're going to move on to our hole making. And our hole making, again, this is all automatically generated. This thing always is exciting for me because it's going to go spot, it is going to drill, and it is going to countersink all on its own. It automatically detected the drill sizes. I didn't have to go figure that out. It knows what it wants to use. It just goes and does it. Um, the other thing is it now pecks the way I want it to peck. First time we ran this a couple years ago, you had to be careful because it liked to plunge, assuming you're using a carbide drill, um, you know, with no retract. This time, absolutely no problem. Going on to our free form. So this is where we are going to start cleaning up some of those radii in the bottom. We use the half inch ML for this one again, I believe if I open that up, it is. Um, I had this called out as a bull mill just to get it to do the movements that I wanted. This is a square, uh, square cornered end mill. You're going to see little cusps. That's okay. You know, if I had wanted, I could have changed that to a ball nose. I just wanted it to do kind of the way it wanted to do it. If I had a bull nose, I would definitely do this the exact same way. So again, it's just cleaning up those little cusps, stepping up, uh, making that work very, very nicely. After that, we're going to move on to our chamfering. So this is going to go and chamfer that bottom edge in there. You can see there is a chamfer at the bottom, but more importantly, it is also going to go deeper. So this is pulling up a quarter inch solid carbide uh, 45 mil. This is gonna go and deeper everything. And you can see when we zoom in here, it knows that it can't just run that tool straight into the wall. It knows that it needs to stay away, give itself some room, 
and it gets in about as close as you could possibly imagine. Our chamfers are all nice and even, it's deep bird. Um, again, this is something that if I wanted deeper chamfers, I just go in and I change my depth or I change how close it comes to the wall. Easy peasy. End of the day, that was done very, very quickly. So let's move on to our OP2 setup. You can see that this has now flipped. My part is on parallels inside that vise, just as we have it in the machine. So let's see how this is gonna go. So this time it's decided that we don't need any facing. You know, last time we ran this, it did face from both sides uh, for a different part. This one, it says we don't need that. We're just gonna move right on to our next gen roughing. So this is going to, again, generate that stock model every single time. So we're not wasting time pulling out uh, material that's not there. We're gonna go in with our half inch ML and it's going to rough the entire top of this part. If you see this right now, you see that block on top of the stock. That is because the stock has been regen and it knows that's what's there. So it's gonna go in, carve all this off, try to get it as close to the model as we can. Um, we are gonna go in with some smaller tools as well. Let me just pull off this. I believe we get into some of our smaller tools here. Yeah, you can see we're gonna finish up some of these uh, radiuses on the edges. We're getting that closer to where it needs to be. Again, these are just roughing, roughing operations. So we're not doing our finishing just yet. Again, pulling in some of our smaller end mills, getting a little bit closer, taking a little bit out at a time. And again, if you don't want to rough with five different end mills, Cloud NC's cam says tries to get it as efficient and close to the part as possible. If you say, I don't like this, I don't need it, you can just delete it. You can do one roughing pass, that's it. After that, we are going to move on to our flats. So for our flats, this is going to pull up our Big old three quarter inch ML, getting a nice finish on there. You can see it's gonna go do all the flat surfaces it can, um, trying to clean that up, make everything look beautiful. After that, we're gonna go finish off that hole. We are going to pull in our half inch ML again. This is just cleaning up that hole from the other side because you can see that there are two counterbores to this part. So it is going to counterbore from both sides, which is what we wanted. And then after that, we are going to hop into our high speed water line. So what this is doing now is grabbing, I believe it is a combination of that half inch ML and a quarter inch ball nose ML. And what this is doing is it's gonna run all the way around the part, building these profiles into exactly as that model is. And it's gonna choose what it wants to use where. So right now it's using that bull nose all the way around the outside. If I wanted to, I could just, you know, with a couple clicks, this is just a Mastercam program, switch that to a ball nose if I like that better. You can see that it's finishing over here with the uh, ball nose. Again, it's all up to you. This just gets you 80% of the way there. For sake of illustration, I let it get us 100% of the way there and ran it. So you can see exactly what this machine's gonna spit out. So let's close that. After that, we are hopping onto our deburring. Again, this is gonna grab that quarter inch solid carbide end mill. It's gonna go uh, deeper the entire perimeter of this part. You can see it's only doing where there's actually an edge. So that's really, really useful. Again, we're not wasting moves. We're not spending a lot of time trying to calculate how close we can get to the walls. And that's how we got to this guy right here. We have a bit of experience with it. We've done this now a few times. That said, all the changes that came out with this new release are all kind of things that I was hoping for. So main features are there's human in the loop oversight. Well, what that means is that as the program generates, as opposed to just being given your list of operations, if you watch our previous videos, you know what I'm talking about. You're actually going to be able to go through as it's generating and help kind of guide it the way you want it to go. Another thing that's really exciting in this is the instant machine ability assessment. So if you've seen some softwares out there that do this, this is now what CloudNC is doing as well. This is when you upload your file into the program. I mean, when you put it in your master cam or your fusion or whatever. Now, when you go and run that cam assist, it's also going to evaluate the machine ability rating of that part. This is going to help you for design feedback. This is going to help you quote. This is going to help you spot any issues before you actually start machining it or programming it. There's nothing we like less than you're sitting there trying to chain one tool path over and over and you can't figure it out because there's actually a little cusp in there that you can't really see, you waste three hours trying to rechain that toolpath, and then you go, there's the problem. This is gonna call stuff out like that right away. This kind of takes Camasys beyond just a AI programming helper. 
you know, that gets you 80% of the way there. And it actually takes it into kind of a in the loop quoting software as well. The other thing you are going to see here for sure is the enhanced roughing. This is the next gen roughing. We looked at it a little bit on the last uh, video we did on this. This takes it to the next level. I literally was afraid when I saw what it wanted to do, but it worked last time. So I said, all right, let's run it again this time. So it actually works. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If 